Cool. Hi. Hi. Um, hi. hi. Um, so I guess I'm not over the last performance. Um, I don't think any of us should be. Um, I would like to have like a loop pedal to just do like wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, that's just my bit. I'm done. Um, so um, I'm just here to present Elena and to kind of swipe the stage for her, as I do, which I'll do with my heart because it's the only broom that I know how to sweep things with. Um, Elena is, is one of my closest friends, and it, it feels like a very bizarre timing that... Um, I'm leaving Brighton next week, and that Elena is just really part of my queer becoming, and my queer baptism, and my queer birth, and and that doesn't mean that like we have fucked. It's like we're really <laughs> close. We're really close friends, everyone. <laughs> um, and so, uh, all right, settle the fuck down. All right, so. Last week, I was going through a really hard time, and Elena met me at a coffee shop and, and held my heart for like two hours. And after that, I was thinking about what Elena's love feels like. And I think that I can never put words to them, but right now what it feels like is like fresh grass and like old wine that's been like brewing in a barrel <laughs> and, and, a, and a bare chest, like a bare summer chest and that kind of warmth. Um, and Elena is, is one of the most hardy people that, that you'll meet, um, and I've had such a privilege to know and love you. This is just the beginning. Sweep the floor. Everyone, put your hands together for Elena. Fuck. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm the whole night I've been in between bursting in tears and having an orgasm. <laughs> I'm like, that's how I kind of feel right, like right now when I'm in front of a hundred people. So, <laughs> Nicole, thank you. Um, how are you? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Good, good. Um, I have never felt this way before when I performed because I've never performed in front of a room where there's so many people that I love so much and know so much and that I've done so many absurd things with. <laughs> so it's kind of... No, I'm kind of nervous, but I'm also very elated, and I'm bursting with excitement. You know, it's just the whole vibe of the night. So, all right, and now I'm gonna bring down your mood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first poem is about something that occurred to me in June. You know, there's some things that happen in your life. And after those things happen, you know that you will never be the same person, you know? So in June, I was uh, walking on Upper Lewis Road with my sister, Isabella. Uh, Upper Lewis Road is just up the corner. And we were talking in Italian and laughing and singing and having such a good time. And we got catcalled by these guys. Mm. So my sister said, ignorali, ignorali, which means ignore them, ignore them. But I said, no, fuck, I'm tired of being silent. I'm going to respond. <laughs> and I did. And we got in a big, big fight. And the fight ended with the man that was catcalling me. When I said, walk and get the fuck out of my space, I clicked my fingers like this. <laughs> get the fuck out of my space. <laughs> click, click. So he walked in front of me. And he won. And he spat in my face. Yeah. And not only that, you know Oasis? I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> it's too sweet, too sweet. <laughs> it's 
So he opened his bottle of Oasis and he threw it at me. <laughs> so the first poem I'm going to read is inspired after this event. Okay. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> what a crowd, what a crowd. <laughs> This poem is called The Spit Spitter. <laughs> it was X's birthday and I was hurting. Dear morning spit spitter, I see you and your blue eyes, a freezing burn, scalding of the skin. Spit, spit, spitter, better a slap or a kick than the spit that threw out of your face and down my neck, hot spit like spice, crashing in between my cosmic tits and beyond in a space that was never yours and never will be. Spitter, I imagine the taste of your mouth as the day's first breath, slow and hungover. I felt you like a headache in its first inception, a throbbing thrust of ta pain in the temple and the half closing of an eyelid, a need for darkness. Would it have made a difference if you had known that it was X's birthday and I was hurting? Morning spit spitter. You might find this hard to believe, but there was a time when I did not scream enough, especially in anger. Thank you. <laughs> you forced me to feel the violence of a, of a simple liquid gesture and its power to engrave railroads on the skin and burn, 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 e bruciare, bruciare, bruciare. Moist contempt. I would have found more sense in punch and blood. Instead, your spit declared. I was not even worth your hands or attention of a muscle. And to make things worse, it was X's birthday. Our love had ended with a text from her phone. So not only I was fucking hurting, I was raging. So of course, with your spit dancing on my cheek still, I shoved your body in the street, forcing the screeching of cars and children in back streets. Meantime, the rest of the world is also admitting the scene, bursting doors and windows open, interrupting phone calls and greetings to watch us, and more it seemed me, and my next move towards you, the morning spit spitter. I stepped on the road, an Italian stereotype of screens. Oh, stronzo, pezzo di merda! <laughs> Vieni qua che adesso ti ammazzo, eh? Ti ammazzo, stronzo! When I get angry in Italian. <laughs> Fuck. The laughter of your reply crawled out of your mouth and up my spine, choking my neck in surprise. I raised an arm. So there I was, fists and rage hovering in midair, traffic at a halt. And my sister, voiceless on the pavement, then you, morning spit spitter, had to open your bottle of Oasis, <laughs> which I hate, and fling it at my face. You left me dripping wet and sticky, your red Oasis, a blanket of inflammation for pain and humiliation. Forget Oasis, I became a desert, scolding, visceral, and prone to storms. Happy birthday, X, to think that only one month before you had confessed an obsession with my hands. And there I was, head spinning from a stranger's spit, from the sugar nausea of Oasis and from your absence. You ran then, spitter, screaming all your hate towards me, the Italian woman, the Italian bitch, working the job that was your right, your inheritance, your place in this island where buses apologize more than people, and eyes <laughs> look down in silence. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. But eventually, you also left my mind. Your spit dried and solidified the fibers of my chest, neck, and cheek. New mouths and lips traced the outlines of your spitty streaks, and each morning felt a little less like X's birthday, and I'm no longer hurting. Thank you.
It's so weird. You you practice this shit in your bedroom, and then all of a sudden you hear the you practice it, and then you go, <laughs> and now it's real. You know, it's pretty bizarre. Because <laughs> I was timing it, you know, I was fucking timing it, guys. <laughs> Am I right on time, Devil's Dyke? Whatever, who cares? Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically what I brought tonight is two big poems. One of them is the Spitter poem. Um, the next one you will hear in a moment. And in th as an interlude, I thought, okay, I'm just going to like gather around some things that I... Some, there's some sentences and words. I don't know if this happens to you, but they always drift in my head. Things that I overhear from people or like pieces of a song or jokes, you know, and I always use those same jokes or like always repeat those sentences. So they're little verses, so I'm gonna say the verse and then I'm gonna pause and say the title of that verse and then move on. Yeah, does that make? Yeah. 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 So it's not ca poetry, it's just like kind of my, my brain. <laughs> it's my brain, literally it's my brain. Okay. You take that one tear rolling down her cheek, sweet hot sticky taste. The next time she cries, you're going to lick her face clean. Redemption. There's a lady where I work who wears her wrinkles with elegance. As I was wiping the crumbs from her table, she once confessed to her wrinkly friend, I have lost many things in life, my dear, but at least I still have my teeth. <laughs> Waiters exist. <laughs> <laughs> There's a waiter. <laughs> we hear everything. We fucking listen to everything you say. <laughs> Anger is the strongest form of keeping someone or something present in your life. I'm so fucking wise. My friends call me the grandmother Willow from Pocahontas. <laughs> Even if the say... Even if the ceiling of the place was painted blue to calm us down and make us believe in the sky, she still managed to die in my arms, and I was caressed by the final breath of her patient life. Amen. Two thousand and seventeen years ago, so deep was my shame about my own pregnancy that I had to come up with this whole speech about how some holy light had slid into my vagina <laughs> and created a deity. <laughs> when I was growing up, I spent more time with nuns than with my own mother. <laughs> Catholic, Italy is a Catholic place, people. <laughs> Our eyes admitted the day with a sigh. We had too much to dream last night. Thank you. Right, final one, final one. And then we'll give space to see who's the headliner of this magical evening. Fuck, I don't know about you, but I feel some kind of crazy energy in this room. Yeah. You like a really powerful kind of amazing vibe. <laughs> I wish every day of my life could be like this. <laughs> Maybe someday. Okay, so has anyone here seen Back to the Future? Yeah. Great. So you know Marty McFly? You know his mother? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> fuck. when I was a child and I saw Lorraine McFly, <laughs> I was like, why do I think about Lorraine McFly so much? <laughs> I was maybe six or seven years old and I, I was in bed just thinking, oh, I want to be hugged by Lorraine McFly. <laughs> <laughs> so this poem <laughs> is inspired. <laughs> I do <laughs> come, come. Okay, so initially I had written a poem about Lorraine McFly, then I thought, no, 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 okay, like it has to be a bit more, a bit better than that. So I, I kept the title, which is Back to the Future, and it's basically a poem about being, so when you, as a queer person, when you look back on your childhood, you think, shit, there were so many things about me that were so fucking queer. <laughs> 
you know? And so it's basically a poem about looking back and thinking how, I wasn't aware of being a queer child but in the, at the time, but then I look back and I think, there were so many signs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically about a poem about being a little dyke. <laughs> Back to the future. <laughs> Think of yourself as a child. The smell of your own skin. Do you remember the sweat? Mine held the tastes and aromas of a salty vegetable blend, especially after hours and hours of running with the boys. My child is a ghost. My child is a phantasmagoric act of glancing back at the past and sighing, oh, I was queer as fuck. A scraggly mess of knotted hair, lopsided glasses, and an, and an eye patch. Scratch marked, ink covered, my dimpled self. She sleeps in clouds of memory, silent, yet impatient to be stirred. Her deepest wish is to come back here in the present. But first, let me ask, have you ever replied, glancing to the ceiling and killing time, to the question, so, when did you know you were gay? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Allow me to spell out my answer. <laughs> Back again. Perhaps it all began with the comfortable tropical days of waiting in the womb, sitting the wrong way, cross-legged and bored, playing rock, paper, scissors against myself, waiting to be turned. Or perhaps it all started with the wrong ass. How could I forget hugging those soft legs from behind? It happened in the changing room of a Levi's store, Houston, Texas. The stranger I believed was my mother, whose legs I held locked in my embrace. While she stroked my head and take off, up in her arms I went, where's your mommy, she asked. No reply on my part. A five-year-old clitoris was opening its eyes for the first time and <laughs> screaming in delight. <laughs> Did I know then that I was gay? There was simply no space in life to love women at my time. I cannot utter in one night the entire chronology of my dykeness. The oversized jumpers, the chewed nails, embarrassment between the clothes of a woman's locker room and the parachute bras swinging backwards and forwards of my mother's arms. <laughs> what about this size, amore? <laughs> the never-ending denials when my nonni be began asking age six onwards, allora, do you have a boyfriend or not? And the necessary transformation eventually and to this very day of as in os, my ragazzas morphing in ragazzos. Lauren, Lorenzo, Valentina, Valentino, Alejandra, Alejandro, <laughs> Kristen, Cristiano, <laughs> Jessica, Jesus, <laughs> Marcy, Maurizio. Did I know then? These days, I explode all over the ones I love an Italian wood-burning fire stove, sourdough ha hand-rolled mess, fresh and spread for the satisfaction of the tip of a tongue and sleepless nights rolling around in bed. <sighs> These days, I catch myself writing for my unborn children and grandchildren, so they will never have to ask, when did I know? Often, I conjure, conjure the faceless shadow of their image their smooth, spotless hands picking up these very words and the sticky spilling of their tears over the vibrancy of my younger self. To them I say, when I was a child, I searched the sky for answers and dreamt of becoming the sun. Of course I knew then. To them I say, when I became older, I jumped out of a plane and my brain filled with the echo of silence and the sun kissed my fingertips. In certain instances of the flight, I, wonder if th I wondered if the parachute would fail us, the instructor and I, just as wax and feathers had failed Icarus. Then again, could it be called failure to fall with a silent mind and an exploding heart? I knew the answer then, as I always have known. 
I became the sun. Thank you, guys.